I'm gonna share with you a near black test pattern that is going to help you calibrate your TV on SDR but also to use HDR on Windows just to force HDR and play games that don't support uh, native HDR or auto HDR from Windows 11 so what I was doing really is I said okay let me do a video about SDR because maybe some people are following me they are interested in knowing you know what can we do for sdr content and my opinion is uh, oh never use sdr why would you do that you spend so much money on this hdr display that's no just use sdr or hlg but i don't want to you know impose my opinion uh maybe it's I'm wrong, of course. <laughs> SDR is a format and maybe you are interested in getting your SDR picture uh, correct. So what happened is I was doing something for, for you. I was not working for me. So when you do something for somebody else, you are helping yourself. That, that's always the case, always the case. And I know that and that's why I did it. I said, okay, I'm going to learn something to teach you something that I don't care at all about it. And it just turned out that by learning about that, it helped me with what I want to do, with what I like. And I'm going to share that with you too. I'm going to share that near black test pattern that you can use to calibrate your SDR picture. BT 1886 and make sure that you're not crushing blacks make sure that you have the perfect visibility near black but I'm also going to use that test pattern to force <laughs> which is what I like to force HDR on every single game that doesn't support native HDR and it doesn't support auto HDR from Windows 11 and I'm going to use that test pattern to learn more I used, I used that test pattern to learn more about black frame insertion and I'm going to share that with you too. So we have here uh, Themesia, amazing game, one of my favorite gameplays ever. I'm playing it using black frame insertion, motion pro on high and uh, 120. It's just, just awesome when you move the camera, just amazing. That's what I like. But this is going to help you if you do also use SDR so let me share with you this test pattern I got this from classy tech calibrations so I was I was watching a video of him he shared this pattern he explained how it works and how you should uh, use it to calibrate your near black um, he was explaining how to do a 22 point calibration to make sure you get that visibility but that's very advanced <laughs> So most people maybe are not comfortable doing that because it takes a lot of work. And you can watch his video. I'm going to post the link in the description if you want to go more in, in depth with that calibration. But what I'm going to do with this test pattern is share with you my experience with it, my experience with it, what I learned from it. And also I learned that what I learned from Windows HDR, okay, in general. And actually... I learn uh, more details about that so this test pattern what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can see uh, let me see on the camera how this looks yeah let me move the camera here a little bit so yeah so we want to make sure on this test pattern we have this diagonal line that is blending in and is going progressively darker and darker and darker and we want to make sure that these uh, squares, it, they're not squares, they're rectangles. So these rectangles that are following that imaginary diagonal line, we want to make sure that these uh, two squares are visible, are perfectly visible, okay? Sometimes you might see, oh, these two are not visible, these two are not visible, and you need to you need to do that 22 point calibration to figure that out. It's, it's not easy, but on my TV, on my display, it is perfect. On SDR, uh, when I use Gamma 2.2, it's perfect. When I use BT1886, then I have to increase the screen brightness to 51, and then it's perfect. On 51, I still have perfect black, so make sure any adjustment you do 
you still check here on the corners that you have perfect black so that the pixels are not turning on okay so you're going to calibrate this test pattern on SDR by using fine-tuned dark areas so when we turn on VRR we can come here and use fine-tuned dark areas and fine-tuned dark areas is going to affect the lower end of the grayscale so you will see that by adjusting fine-tuned dark areas you are affecting this section of the pattern more okay so i can help you to balance uh, things out and we're also going to use the screen brightness or if you have a c2 the uh, black level which is uh, more correct so the screen brightness so we're going to uh, change that so you can do that for your sdr picture for gamma bt1886 or 2.4 and 2.2 uh, for SDR, the standard is BT1886, uh, Rec. 709 BT1886. So I would suggest you to do it if you care about accuracy. Make sure that you get the perfect visibility on that uh, mode, okay? But I'm going to post the link in the description with that classy video if you want to go in depth with that. What I'm going to do with this pattern is I am going to use this to make sure that I have perfect visibility on HDR when I turn on HDR from Windows 11 for my games that don't support HDR so when you turn on HDR on Windows 11 you are still on SDR when you open a non supported game the game is still on SDR but now the TV is on HDR format so why would you want to do that well because it looks better <laughs> So what, when I do that, I tested that the maximum peak brightness, so when you max out that slider, that SDR to HDR slider, I got, I got that wrong last time, and I'm going to show you the proof here, uh, how, I, how I got that wrong and, and why it is 500 nits. So I got that wrong last time because I took a screenshot using Alt F1. So this is Kina. Kina does support Auto HDR from Windows 11 but i just turn off auto hdr for this testing so when i took the screenshot with alt f1 and i open the screenshot with this hdr wcg image viewer app it says estimated max cll 10,000 nits this is because the screenshot was not uh it was not taken correctly so yeah it, it is not 10,000 nits so when i take the screenshot using the game bar so you you press Windows, Alt, and Print screen at the same time. Uh, then I make. Then I see that the game is trying to output 498 nit. So the picture looks washed out because uh, you know tone mapping the camera and all of that. But the game looks phenomenal. So it's 498 nits. So every single game. So if we open here this Themisia, 447 nits. If we open Plague Tale Innocent, with it, which it doesn't support HDR on the PC, uh, Max CLL 498 nits. So every single game, I also tested GTA 5, 472 nits. So every single auto HDR game we open is trying to... So every single game that is on SDR uh, and we have turned on HDR on Windows, the game is trying to output a maximum of 500 nits so the picture is also going to look washed out and the reason is the the the, the gamma the grayscale is elevated so what we have to do is we have to lower that and we have to lower that with that uh, screen brightness but we have to make sure that we lower that but we still have perfect blacks so what I did is I used this test pattern and I know I have to turn on dynamic tone mapping to use black frame insertion. I turn on dynamic tone mapping to get that visibility. So I have motion pro on high. And also I have to turn on dynamic tone mapping because the games are trying to output 500 nits. So 500 nits is, uh, is not enough. This display can do more. So dynamic tone mapping is going to push those highlights a little bit more so what I do is I lower this screen brightness to 44 so this is probably the setting for your TV too but this might vary 
per display a little bit so you have to test it yourself I'm gonna have the link on the description to this test pattern so you have to test this on your TV but more, most likely it's the same it's 44 with dynamic tone mapping on so with that value I see all the rectangles all of them I, I'm not crushing blacks of course you have to do you have to do this testing on a dark room on the recording you cannot see it uh, so I can see all the squares they are perfectly visible and if I lower that from 44 to 43 I crush here so that's exactly the value of my TV so 43 it crushes 44 I can see them so that's the value and because of that every single game that I open it looks perfect so that allows me to use uh, black frame insertion motion pro high and everything is looking uh, fantastic the colors the visibility of the mid-tones is great also the visibility of the mid-tones is very good because the game is not trying to output you know it's just 500 nits so dynamic tone mapping has a lot of headroom to work with so if the game is not trying to output a lot on the on the peak brightness then dynamic tone mapping has more ener energy available to bright to over brighten the the mid tones and that's exactly what we need for uh, motion pro high so another thing that i learned by using this test pattern is that black frame insertion is not affecting it's not crushing the near black I thought that black frame insertion was crushing the near black and actually I have to correct that on the on the on the previous video I made about black frame insertion with the HDR calibration app on Windows I said let's raise the black level to one instead of zero that minimum uh, brightness let's raise that to one and it is not necessary it is not necessary I was wrong about that because I thought black frame insertion is crushing the near black and it is not it is affecting the mid tones and the peak brightness but the near black is still visible so when I now with this perfect settings if I turn if I turn off black frame insertion and then I lower to 43 I'm still crushing so black frame insertion it doesn't have any problem near black that's why on SDR if you lower your OLED brightness and you turn on black frame insertion you can barely tell that it's on because it, it affects more the peak brightness and the mid tones that are closer to the peak brightness so yeah I was wrong about that so basically that's good news that's good news because now we can do the auto HDR from Windows 11 we can have the minimum brightness and zero and what I would recommend is dynamic tone mapping set set that maximum brightness to 980 980 so 0 980 980 uh, default color and use dynamic tone mapping for black frame insertion if the game supports auto HDR from Windows 11 and if it doesn't then max out the SDR HDR slider turn on dynamic tone mapping brightness 44 or double check that on your TV so let me know if this is helpful I think I learned a lot from using this I learned that black from insertion is actually not crushing near black and I learned for myself that it is uh, that it is actually very useful for non-supported HDR games also I want to give a shout out to uh, Dagobert64 who told me brother <laughs> you know if it's a dog <laughs> when you I said my plasma TV the remote is not working when you press a button this is the DVD lighting so I have just have to change it to TV <laughs> man. man I don't know how I and I don't know why that happened so basically because I don't have a DVD I've never used this before so yeah that's all I need to do just change it to TV and my plasma TV doesn't have any problem now thank you Dagovert 64 <laughs> uh, in, in, in Cuba we say in Spanish Dagoberto Dagoberto <laughs> so thank you brother um, I really missed that I've been too focused on, on the OLED <laughs> but now I have my plasma working thank you 